Okay, hello. So, today we're back in FL Studio 20. Unfortunately, yesterday our art stream didn't save. That was really unfortunate. It was a really fun one. But I've learned my lesson, and everything's being recorded now for uh, preservation purposes. So, the first time I did this stream, nobody was able to hear what I was actually doing, and no one can hear the song. So I think I'm going to start out this stream by just playing all of the different patterns I've set up uh, with an overview of the ambient noise, and then we'll play the song that we have thus far. Uh, just so everyone can actually hear what is happening. So we'll start out with our chord layer. So that's our chord. And then I have this for the bass. For the first drum set, this is the pattern we have. For our second drum set, we've got our first melody here. Let me make sure that starts from the beginning. Second melody. And then I have a choir accompaniment that sounds like this. And a string accompaniment. Okay, and then for our audio clips, uh, the main ambient noise is a heavy rain sound. Uh, it's just a free uh, rain sample. Okay. 
I'm sorry, I, I'm trying to figure out. Uh, how to let you guys hear it. Let me just do it this way. So it's just a very gentle rain sample. And this will go the entire length of our song as you can. And then I have a reverse crash from Asparagus. It's part of his free uh, lo-fi drum kit for our risers. And then I didn't wind up using the sample here, so let's just clean this up and get rid of it. Okay, so now that we've heard all of the components, let's go ahead and uh, listen to the song. Now, this controller here, this envelope, is for the rain sound effect. Thank you. 
So that is the song so far. So while listening, I did notice there's a couple of places I'd like to fine tune. I think it's somewhere here in melody two. There is an offbeat note in the beginning measures that sounds kind of off. So we'll go and fix that. I think I want to add some more instruments as well. The song sounds good, but it sounds a little too simple for my taste. So we may add a few more elements uh, along the line. And then the length is a little too short. So I think what we need to do is go ahead and add some extra bars into it just to pad out the length a bit more. And that'll also work out uh, with our new additional instruments added. So first things first, let's uh, review our melodies and uh, try to find the places where it's catching. So the first melody sounds good. It's definitely in the, this second melody section. And it's this note right here. There's just something about it that isn't right. So let's go in and review it. So I think maybe the problem is its placement. So it's not on the first beat, it's on the second beat. So let's maybe just move it and see how it sounds now. Okay, so that sounds better. Let's lengthen it so we can get a sustained note here. And that sounds so much better already. Okay, so that sounds good. Let's listen to it in the context of the song and see if that little catch is uh, worked out now. Oh yeah, so much smoother. And I think a problem with the song, the reason we need to add more instruments too, is these melody measures that I've made are quite long. So we want a interesting sound change to happen every uh, eight measures or so. And I believe our melody two is actually 12 measures long. And even though the melody changes, uh, it may not be as interesting as it could be. So uh, since we're using the oboe here for some pretty high notes, and we do use the strings later on, maybe we could get some uh, pizzicato strings. Let me get my Floristine uh, set out. 
Let's make a new layer. We're just going to assign a random color. Okay, and since this is going to be, I think, a main accompaniment for our second melody, let's go in and copy these. I'm just going to shift around the pitches. I think the lower octave is better. And I like this one. Maybe to make this a little more interesting, we're not going to have it copy the notes of the melody exactly. So let's change it up just slightly in some places so we can make it a little more interesting. Go mm, through the melody there. I'm just shortening these longer notes. They're not even crucial to the sound because they end within two bars. And then we'll just add some variations. All right, let's try the whole thing. Let's do it on the um, second portion. We'll leave this first one. 
a little bare. That way it seems like the song is increasing in depth the longer it goes. Okay, so while the melody is complimentary, I don't think I like this particular instrument for this accompaniment. So let's just play around and maybe find something that we do. Definitely not. Definitely not that. Let's try to find an instrument in Plex, maybe. You know, a good pad may add some nice depth, but we'll go and add that later on a much longer sustained note. Um, but for now, let's just find an instrument that will match our oboe real nice. Soon is kind of fun. Now, there are a bunch of places that we need to change. We originally designed this for the strings, so let's go back in here. And of course, I gotta make sure we're on the right layer. All right, and then we'll just select anything below here and get rid of it. We'll bring these back down the two octaves. And you know me, I gotta see if it sounds better with the reverb. Almost everything sounds better with a reverb. Okay, and I like that, so I'm going to carry it over. Let's go ahead and make sure 
this is matching up. Oh, we got our rename our layer to bassoon. I did not mean to shrink this. Okay. Uh, let's just change the icon. Yeah, we don't really have a bassoon <laughs> icon. Uh, we'll just do a saxophone. Close enough, I guess. Now, let's go get in some ambient pads. To maybe flesh out the sound a little better. And... We'll do it uh, along the same lines as the bass chords. Assign a random color to this one. I think we want just a real soft um, ambient. So let's go through and find it. I'm not too familiar with the Flex library yet, so it's going to take me a moment to find what I'm looking for. Well, that one's fun. That's not really the tone we're going for. This one, it may be a nice addition. So maybe let's get it started during the uh, chorus section and then we'll continue it out, turn it down. We'll keep it for now. I'm not too sold on it just yet. But I think it does have a nice. I'll just leave that icon. I'm feeling lazy today and I'm not going to be ashamed of it. Let's find a, another pad company. Add this, we undo the color. Make sure we get our notes in there. Thank you. 
<laughs> Sound like an old spaceship sound effect. No, that's definitely not relaxing. <laughs> you know that pluck actually sounds nice. Let's change this. See what it sounds like. For the reverb. Then let's add it in this second chorus. Okay, and for the song, I think what we need to do is after this point, let's add another full chorus, and then we'll wrap up with an end. So, let's copy these. Get them moved over. And then same with the choir and the strings. I think I'll bring those back. Whoop. And then I think we'll go back to the second drum set. Full chord, full bass. And I think I may add a third sound, maybe a flute. So let's get a new flex and four. And then I think we will follow the lines of the choir. So we're just going to select all those, copy them, let's color flute layer. And then come over here to Essential Winds. 
and get my kind of flutes. And it seems like this is at too low an octave for the sound font, so we're going to raise it. And I think I'm going to arpeggiate this. And then I'm going to change every two. I think. On these fours. Gonna vary up these threes. And I think the twos need some variation too. We'll leave this one. change the end of that to where this little final notes lower. And burp it up. Okay, that new beat does not work at all with the melodies and stuff established. I think let's just clear it all, start from scratch. But I think I'm just going to put a ones and threes. And I think I need to go ahead and do a three bar setup or a four bar setup so we can match things a little better.
let's change these F's here. And I think we need to change these last C's so that when it loops around, it doesn't sound uh, too long. I think these flutes are going to sound better an octave higher. I do think we need to change the third set of notes maybe. They sound a little off key from the rest of the song. It's the second set. So this second set is not in key with um, everything else. So let's get in here. Change these to an E. I believe that'll fix the issue. That's already better. That's good for the final bar. Uh, let's clean this up a bit. I neglected to put these to you auto name. Okay. I think I will bother to go ahead and change the flute because I know there's an icon for it. We'll just use a recorder. I don't know, do they have a flute icon? No, it's just the recorder. Okay. So something I like to do for my songs is um, a tapering of sounds toward the end with a final uh, solo instrument for the final few bars. That's our melody one. Is a good length. I think I'll end it on melody one uh, and what I'll do is we'll switch back to drum set one here just so that it's not as intense going toward the end I don't think I want to do a full melody two out because it's a little long so we'll switch back to melody one here and since we're doing a shift I'm going to put in our riser uh, we won't do the bassoon because it matches melody two so uh, I think I'll also leave out the ambient pad Let's do the pluck, the flute, the choir, and the strings are for melody two. So we'll leave it like this.
And I believe the flute's a little too high energy for the second phase of the fade out. So let's just keep the pluck instead. Okay, let's get a another riser at this shift and a riser down here where we'll go into our final phase where everything is gone except our melody. And let's make sure this has enough time to fade. I think I want the rain sound to continue a little after the melody stops. Oh, thank you, Sheld, for the <laughs> the follow. I love your name. I love gastropods. There's actually a similar species on my home planet. Welcome to the family. Uh, so let's just start from the beginning and listen to the full song. Yeah, they're, we call them the Song Sisters because they sing. They have little chirping noises that you can hear throughout the entire desert side of the planet. Well, thank you. After we're done with this song here, I might shift over and show you a song I made based on them where you can actually hear their chirps. So this song is nice and chill. I think what we'll do with it is we'll put it in our art playlist for our Monday art streams. It could just be in the background with us while we hang out. I'm wondering if we should edit the envelope again and actually let the rain noises come through. Let's just test that out, see if it sounds any better. I actually like it at full volume with the rain noise, so let's leave it in.
think I'm gonna lower the flute. Yeah, it doesn't sound so aggressive now. Okay, and we'll bring in this fade so it begins a little earlier. We don't want the ambience to go on too long. And then I'll just trim this down so it's not hanging off the edge of the song. Uh, so steeply. We'll bring it just a little past the end of the envelope. And I think we're done with this song. Let's give it a last save. And uh, later off stream, I will get it exported and we will hear it on the next art stream. I'm going to go ahead and switch over to the song I was telling Shelled Gastropod about. I'm currently making an album based on the sounds of my home planet. So this is for the region that is uh, tidally locked in the sunlight and is very desertous. So we have a race similar to gastropods that run the deserts. Uh, they like to burrow into the ground and uh, whenever the sandstorms aren't so bad, you'll see them above ground collecting resources. So uh, this line is just based on them. Uh, I'll go through the, the sounds before we play the whole song. Uh, for ambience, there's a lot going on. So we have a wind sound effect because my home planet Ubun, very windy everywhere, uh, but especially in the desert regions. Then we have um, this bamboo wind chime sound effect. It kind of mimics the sounds of the equipment the Song Sisters carry around on their backs. Uh, now, there's several different chirp sounds that I have uh, messed around with the samples to get them to sound right. Uh, and that's what plays in this row. As you can see, I did not do a good job in organizing this project, but it's never too late to fix it later. So for the main sounds, I use a sitar. Uh, being on Earth, I notice that a lot of people associate that with some very desertous regions sometimes, so I think it works. I also have some very spacey um, sounding ring accompaniments from the flex pack. And uh, all in all, I think I'm really proud of this one too. Let's go through the patterns real quick. So this is the basic chord I'm working with. This is our bass. And 
since I'm a sucker for reverb on this album, I just went ahead and put the reverb on absolutely everything in the master queue. It saves me a lot of time. I know I'm going to add reverb. Uh, so here's our sitar melody. Uh, this is our first drum set. Our second drum set. Uh, thank you for the compliment on the sitar. So it's with the flex pack and I find if you add Reverb to almost any instrument, it sounds 10 times better. I have some marimbas. We've got this flex pack guitar called Nylon Shimmer. It. it has a nice spacey pad afterwards. I use that a lot in some of the spaces. Then I have this cube sound. And then I have this ace, uh, which is a, another spacey guitar sound. Set up for the song, it begins with just the call and responses of the sisters, uh, followed by an alert sound for danger, then there is some silence, and all clear noise, and their chirpings resume. This happens throughout the song. Anytime there is an alert sound, the song gets quiet, and when there's a uh, all clear sound, the song resumes. So I think I'll just go ahead and play the full song so you can hear that.
And then here I have some sound envelopes, getting rid of the spacey noises. And we just have some ambient sounds of the sisters fading into the background. So I don't know, Shell, did that sound like space gastropods to you? I don't know if you could hear it, but it sounded like a dying music box for me for some reason. The performance of my computer started failing down here. <laughs> oh, thank you. So uh, this is going to be part of an album I'm working on. Hopefully I'll have 13 or 14 tracks for it. I'm sorry about the choppy internet. It's not you. It is definitely me. Uh, I live in a country where it's really, really hard to get good internet. And it takes several months for any service to be updated. Uh, so right now we're looking at a two month wait for the good internet. So it's not you. It's definitely on my end. But uh, after the stream, the VOD should be up completely lag free and I'll also post it to YouTube next week. Uh, later on down the line in a couple weeks I'll be posting um, the album onto YouTube with a uh, nice set of dancing Galobians to go with it just as a chill playlist for people who are interested. Now, let's go ahead, I'm going to uh, to start a new track because we've got plenty of time and looking at the stream, while there is some cutout, the lag isn't horrendous uh, like it's been in the past. So I think we've got time to make a new I'm going to load this one back up. I'm working on an Earth computer that's the capacity of a potato, but it gets the job done eventually. Um, let me see, I believe. No, I don't want to see. Yeah, it looks like I got rid of it. Yeah, slowly but surely. So there's an opening file that um, I have that would make everything clear. Uh, but I have it saved somewhere else, so I'm just going to go through. Let's just Clear everything so we can start our new song. I think I do want it to be another relatively calm uh, lo-fi kind of sound just because those are the songs that I like to make and the songs I like to listen to. 80s music and lo-fi keep me going 100%. I'm sorry about the MooBot. That's the first time MooBot has worked, and it was supposed to be on the art streams for the art packs I use. So, <laughs> MooBot strikes. Okay, let's go clear this piano chord. Well, thank you for complimenting my setup. I do all the art and everything myself, uh, just because I like to. 
So in the future, we may do um, an updated uh, interface live stream, maybe for a celebration of some kind, but I think it's cute for now. And as far as overlays go, I do try to keep it really simple. I don't want to overwhelm anyone, and I want you guys to be able to see what's happening pretty clearly. I also am always open to suggestions if you have any notes for improvement. I'm always trying to give you guys the best I can. Uh, so I'm just going to start with a stamp, and I like fifth octave as a beginning setup. Let's move these out. I think I'll keep on e-piano. And let's lower it one octave. And I think I'm going to go ahead and do what I did on my album. I'm just going to add a reverb to the entire master track because that's what I'm going to wind up doing with all these instruments. I think we'll keep something similar for the second bar. And let's go ahead and ungroup these. The shortcut is Alt G if you ever find yourself working in FL Studios. It's going to save your life. Um, and let's go ahead and adjust this. And another problem I see, I started it a little, a little before the bar. So let's go in and I think I'm going to go up again. And then we'll go down. And I think this is all still an octave too high. Let's move it down. resolution bar here. Mm, this is a minor. It may not work. I think something that's throwing it off, this middle one, is a little high. So let's get it maybe just a little lower. I don't know if we want it to repeat. So let's move this little one. It's just a, got a little variation to it. And that sounds much better. So we're going to go ahead and copy this. Lay it down on our base, and I actually think we'll move it. Let's get an ambient noise in here that can fill up our intro. 
but while it's on my mind, let's go ahead and create the chord base. Random color. I'll go here to bass. This is just a bass guitar. I'm going to go in, deselect, and erase all the top notes. Just leave the bottom ones. Bring it down an octave. And that may, that's too low an octave to pick up some of those notes. So we'll just bring it back up. And get follow record. And then let me go in to the ambient noise. Got saved. Let's think about what kind of sound effects we want to have. I believe I have a park sound effect with a water fountain in it. Yeah, this one. We're going to use this one. Okay, let's get this name down. I'm going to rename this to Ambience. Forgot to change the color and stuff. I'll make it nice green. And then we'll just change the icon to a sound wave. Let's change the icon on this to a bass guitar. And then we need to lower the sound on our ambience so it doesn't drown out our song. But we also want it loud enough to hear through the song. And that level's about good. I think next we can work with the drum setup. So let's go ahead and get a new layer. We'll just name it drum, da dum dum dum. Uh, random color. And I think I'm going to still keep working with the things I used in the first song. Uh, the Drums that I have is a free one that Asparagus offers. He's got a video on YouTube with a link to the free kit. And if you're going to be making lo-fi sounds, I think it's a good uh, place to start. Uh, so we don't want too many uh, 808s in the pattern. And we're going to do hi-hats on that helped if I was at the beginning. We're going to do hi-hats on twos and fours. So let's see how that sounds. I think I'm going to move it to four here. And that's good. Uh, and then let's get a percussion hit in some of these places. It's like a, a bongo sound. I enjoy it. I think this one here is a little much. Let's maybe fill up this in. I like that. Let's go ahead and Make sure the swing and stuff is still on from our last setup. Yep, so it's nice and swingy. Let's start here. We'll let the chord play out, I think, eight bars before we get to the drum pattern. So 
We're going to try to make this a nice long song. Let's shoot for a five minute mark song. And leave the ends in a place where it can be looped. And that's good. Okay, so we have our drums for our basic V. I'm going to go ahead and clone it. It's going to be our second drum. So these are going to be for our course. So we're going to make them uh, a little more uh, thumpy. You know, a little, a little more energy to them. And I think we'll also add a snare. Let's maybe move this there. And I think that's good. Uh, since we have eight bars of chorus here, I think maybe, or not chorus, but the main meat of the song, if you will, let's do a four chord lead. So let's leave this blank so I know to go and change up the drums and maybe the last. But then we'll do a 12 bar chorus. Make sure we're carrying over our ambient noises. And then we'll switch to drum two. And this section will be our chorus. We're going to auto name this and then rename it to just drums. So let's also get a lead up drum pattern uh, for this section here. And we'll rename it as drum lead. And I think what we'll do is uh, get another percussion uh, in on this. Let's go to the asparagus pack. And the hi-hat I have on now is this, which actually may be fine. Yeah, that, that this is gonna be fine. So what I'm gonna do I'm going to make this one have a increasing, um, and I'm putting this in the wrong portion, an increasing hi-hat uh, sound. So that'll be you lead up here, and I think we'll just fill this last part in. And then I think I'll do the same thing for the end of this first chorus section. Okay, and then we'll have the following section. Uh, we'll just have kind of the same setup. We'll have eight 
uh, bars of uh, sound, a lead up section, and then let's do a full 16 chorus. Uh, we will switch back to drum one here for the um, the in between section. Get our lead up going into the second chorus. Have our second drum all throughout the sixteen bars. Uh, chorus. Uh, we'll make the last one a lead drum. And then I think we'll do um, a real quick timing session. Let's just see how long this is right now. I'm sorry, I'm just doing some math in my little gel head of mine. So if we've got 80 beats per minute. Okay, yeah, we're going to need to try and hit for this 85 mark here. So after our long chorus, let's have an interval. We won't have our chords in it. I think we'll keep drum two. And let's do eight bars of interval. And then we'll bring back the chords for a lead up bar. Put our lead here. Let's fill the rest of these with drum two. Then we will do a final 12 section chorus. Continue drum two through here, and then we will do some fade out bars and we'll end around the 100 bar mark. And I think that'll get us into a good time zone. So now we've got all the basic stuff down. We can start working on the melodies and the undertones of the song. So I think I like all the sounds from the last song. So we'll just use it again. Let's get Bobo. Give it random color. And then do some fiddling. So I definitely made a mistake last time by making the melody bars so long for the second portion. Uh, so I think I'm going to try and keep them down to eight bar intervals. Let's start with this higher optimal set and just find some notes we like.
I might think those are some good starting sounds. Uh, I'm just going to go ahead and select everything and scooch it down. And we'll just make them all fit one bar. We're just going to fill in uh, on every um, every four bars the same note. I think I'm going to change this D7. It's a little high. That's much better. Mm, I think I'm going to try to keep all the notes under C7. Uh, I forgot to put a note here. Okay, and then let's get some variation in here. I think this is a good base to work with. Let's leave this one, shorten this one, get a tiny, tiny note up there. Let's make this one two repeating notes. I uh, will leave this one sustained. Okay. And second bar, I think I'm going to do much the same thing. We'll leave the ends for normal size. And I think I'm just going to do that throughout the pattern. We're going to shrink the first portion, have it raise a note slightly uh, with a quick note, have a double repeating note for the third sound, and a sustaining at the end. Since this is C7 and I want to keep everything kind of below it, I'm actually going to make this one come down. Yeah, we don't want anything to go above it. I think the sound gets too uh, painful at that, <laughs> that level. Um, so we're going to lower it on that one just so we're within a pleasant range of sound. We're going to go through here and finish up this last bar. Okay, let's hear it from the beginning.
So I think that's pleasant for our first melody. Let's get it here. Maybe we'll do a special oboe lead up here and we'll get a second melody for our chorus. Let's get these together. And in place, um, I think we'll do a uh, melody uh, part one in this space because we're going to have the part two over here and again over here. So just to break it up a little, we'll keep this as the first melody. And let's see how that all works together. So something seems off about it. Maybe it's the positions the, the keys are starting in on the bars. It's not quite matching up in beat to the chorus. may actually be the drums. Let me go change the swing on these. Lower it so it's just not as And I may go ahead, let's get rid of these little notes and see how that helps the sound. So yeah, I think it was the fact that we had cut those sounds down to thirds. So let's make them twos so that everything's within a divisible timestamp. And let's see if that wound up making any difference. So yeah, it's still better without these. Let's sustain these all the way to the four. And then we'll have the double sounds there. And it, now since everything's a little more monotonous, let's get these second ones into a change.
It's this there. This high hat. Let's completely do this melody again. Never be afraid to erase something. And start again. Let's work on something else first. Maybe I'll do the choir ooze instead. Let's get choir. And then let's just copy the base. Okay, and we will start that within the chorus section. And we'll just continue it through the rest of the song until uh, the fade out at the end. So we'll leave it there for now. I think I'll go ahead and get rid of Gated Breath. I'll get rid of the pluck from their coming. And let's get a string ensemble layer. We'll make it follow the same pattern. But let's do it at two different octaves. And we won't add this one until the second chorus. And then we'll continue it again until the fade out section. And I think I'm going to go in, I'm going to 
change the second bars so that they're in complementary tones, but not exactly the same. Those are just too low, so instead let's bring them up. Okay, let me just check the stream. Okay, we're still doing good on lag. It's relatively low today. So let's go ahead and uh, continue on with what we're doing. Let's go back to Ovo and try this again. I think let's look at the drums. So let's make a beat. Kind of follow something similar to this pattern. I'm just going to get something random just to see if the beats work. Okay, so that seems to work. Let's Cut it and get it into the right layer. And then let's get it throughout our bars. Let's do the far bar setup. We'll just keep everything the same for now. We're just getting our beat in. Okay, now we can mess with the tones. I like the first one. Let's leave it there. And I think I like it with this short sound. So we're going to leave it um, on the smaller side. Uh, let's change some notes around. To go through real quick I realize something that's happening is these instruments that had reverb in the last song are getting a double reverb so let's unassign those that's better Let's get over here. 
try this out. Uh, let's get these fixed up. And then I think let's clone this and rename it to Lita. And let's get a slightly different ending for the pattern. Let's this to Obo and then let's add in the asparagus pack. He has um, a reverse crash that I like to use for the leaves and to the changes of the song. So I'm just going to go in and start adding those. And instead of the asparagus crash, I think for the elbow lead up, let's go ahead and create our own lead with elbow sound. So let's just um, assign this to a controller. I'm going to go ahead and remove all the different um, controllers. I'm going to get rid of this old envelope. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to get the Edison plugin. Okay, uh, let's cut away this excess here. And We just want this first section. So just need to cut off the end some more. Okay, and let's do a reverse. think maybe let's see how the polarity does Okay. 
I'm just going to keep messing around with this until it's where I want. Let's see how this sounds. Actually, don't think it added much. Let's just go back to the tried and true. Get us a nice reverse crash. Let me actually try this for time. I think I just sampled the wrong. So let me go back, we're going to try to keep some of that tail at the end. Okay, that's the part I want to keep. So. Now let's reverse. Oh yeah, that's what we're looking for. Okay, that sounds good. Let me check something. So it seems like some shenanigans are afoot. My stream duration has been a little over two hours at this point. And it seems like the stream crashed and restarted. So I think that's a pretty good indication that we should uh, stop that for today. Um, <laughs> for the YouTube video, I will stitch these two videos together. Um, I've got the full two hour recording, and we'll just go with that. Uh, the internet gods are having their say in saying, you shall no longer be here. <laughs> so, we're going to end the stream for the day, and uh, I want to thank uh, you guys for stopping by, and I want to go ahead 
and give a special thanks to Shelled Gastropod for following. And thank you for talking with me about our song. So for now, this is it. And until next time, have fun space friends!